The signal flags wave merrily in the breeze as we slowly come to anchor in the beautiful Bay of Funchal, the principal port of the island of Madeira, which lies out in the Atlantic Ocean about 500 miles southwest of Portugal, to which it belongs. Always on the alert for visitors, the enterprising natives come racing out in their little boats, in which they have piled a lot of fruit, flowers, and embroideries, which are displayed for the benefit of those who cannot go ashore. The embroideries and pieces of drawing work are really beautiful, and the prices are so modest that one is easily tempted to buy. The younger and more energetic islanders entertain us with a display of their skill at diving, as they plunge into the blue water to get the coins that the passengers cross into the bay from the steamer. But when they have secured enough attention, they grow more ambitious and in melodious Portuguese loudly call for larger coins. Every now and then English words pop out like silver, forte, 50 cents, and even dollar, which they get sometimes. No sandy beaches here. The island of Madeira is of volcanic origin. It is at the top of a gigantic undersea mountain. As pieces of the hard rock break off from the cliffs, they fall into the sea, where the waves roll them around against each other until they are ground down to the shape of a flattened egg with a polished surface. The streets of Funchal are remarkably clean and smooth. They are paved with the large pebbles that have been polished by the waves. And in courtyards, the natives vie with each other to obtain artistic patterns with pebbles of different shades. There is no rattling of wheels to jangle one's nerves in this peaceful place. People are taken for a ride in carros, quaint native conveyances mounted on runners, like our slaves. Bullocks of leisurely gait furnish the motive power. Progress is slow, of course, but then who cares? No one is ever in a hurry in this land of wine and sunshine. It is surely a novel experience to go sleigh riding with the flowers in bloom. By way of contrast, a few automobiles show that the enterprising salesman has not overlooked this far-off place. Ashore, one has a better opportunity of examining closely the exquisite embroideries and pieces of drawing work so skillfully made by the clever fingers of the Madeira women. It takes time and patience to turn them out, but the Madeira woman leads a simple life. Her housework is soon done, and she has plenty of leisure to indulge in embroidery, which is her favorite pastime. It is claimed that the intricate patterns of the drawn work were originally inspired by our friend the spider. In fact, some of the earlier designs exactly reproduced the spider's web. The towns are built on the gentle slopes that incline to the sea, affording many picturesque scenes. A number of villages nestle under the cliffs along the shore. Only on the coast are the villages found. The interior is not habitable because of the high mountains, deep gorges, and steep ravines. The people go from place to place in their small boats. The roads are few, and most of them are bad. The sun-kissed slopes are ingeniously terraced to prevent the rain from washing away the rich soil in which flourish the vineyards that have made Madeira famous throughout the world. With this primitive 16-pound axe, an industrious native is shaping staves for a cask that once filled with the luscious grape juice will be stored away in a vault for many years to let the wine get ripe and mellow as it should be. The vaults in which the wine is stored play an important part in the process of aging. Some vaults are kept at a high temperature by hot air which is pumped into them through flue. The day I visited the establishment of a prominent wine producer, I had an unforgettable experience. The owner, with the inborn courtesy of his race, was showing me over his plant. We came to a vault that had not been entered since he was a little boy. We faced an old rusty padlock that had not been opened for 50 years. And after breaking this long spell, my kindly host took me into the sanctum and gave me a glass of Madeira of the vintage of 1605. Think of it, wine 330 years old, a treat never to be forgotten. Hurry up there, young lady, you're going to be late for your party. Come on, run along. But, woman-like, she had to stop to show us her new bonnet. It's a quaint native cap of blue cloth, called a carapusa. Here they are, gathered around the festive wine cask, keeping time to one of their favorite fados. They use a small guitar like a ukulele, which they call machete. I think she's inviting you 
to join them in a drink. Flowers in countless varieties vie with each other in the brilliance of the color and the sweetness of their perfume. Many varieties are not to be found outside of Madeira. Others were imported from Portugal a long time ago. Here the children have to make themselves useful at an early age. Hi there, young fellow. Why aren't you at school today? Oh, you're delivering milk, are you? Okay, go ahead. Funchal is the capital of Madeira. It is built on the slope of a mountain 4,000 feet high. A cog railway goes chug-chugging up the mountain, winding through picturesque scenery and shady paths that invite the ambitious hiker to make the grade on foot. But for those who do not care for cog railways or walking, there are hammocks strung on poles that husky natives shoulder up to the top without apparent effort. These are called ray days. Now, why is a ray day like a Broadway car? Because there is always room for one more. And off they go in regular oriental style. And here comes the cog railway, panting up the last grade, and a few more chug chugs, and we'll be up the top. It makes no difference how you get there. The main thing is to arrive, for this is where the real fun begins. Seated by twos and threes in wicker chairs mounted on runners, the enterprising trio hunters are all set to go sliding down the mountain over the pebble pavement. Let's watch closely, for this is real fun. Here they go. The runners have been well greased, and each pair of native guides is out to beat the record. Let's watch them closely. Now here comes another group. They're trying to catch up. See, even in Madeira, three of a kind beats two pairs. Go to it now, Pedro. The others are gaining. Hurry up. Steady, Antonio. Steady. Keep in the middle of the road. Ah, oh, that's an unwelcome sound. It's the steamer's whistle calling for us to come aboard. We hate to go, for after all, we certainly had a good time in Madeira. Our eyes are filled with beauty and quaintness, and my palate with pleasant memories as I recall that 300-year-old wine. Oh, I seem to taste it yet. 